Pat Farbo with St. Francis head men's basketball coach Rob Krimmel. Rob is entering his 10th year as the head coach here at SFU, and he is the second all-time winningest coach, only behind Skip Hughes in program history. His team is on the cusp of the 21-22 season. They will open it on Tuesday, November 9th, 8 p.m. fans down at George Washington University. That game will be seen on ESPN+. Plus. Rob, it was an odd 20 21 season to say the least I'm sure as a coach and knowing you well you were uh, real happy to get back to a little bit more normalcy in the preseason this year yeah it was let's go back to the summer it was great to have a summer with our guys you know we didn't have that last year and then coming in in the fall you know, the accessibility of the gym for, for all the right reasons our guys weren't able to use the locker room and the gym and as we kind of worked through what the pandemic was all about last year and you kind of take those things for granted because every other year before that we've had those things and now to be able to go back and you know build on what what we started last year with the young group and some guys that were getting more minutes than what they were used to but then building on that team chemistry and that's done a lot of times in the summer and in the fall and uh, you know I'm, I'm really pleased to, you know to be able to play in front of fans again that's something that you know was very different last year and really looking forward to you know getting back to college basketball as we all know and love it but certainly thankful for those that got us to play last year you know the the leadership of you know the our president you know our, our ad and and those people here on campus that allowed us to play safely and make it through a season. What about all of the uh, challenges uh, that you had to address last year? And of course, this is not over. Uh, the pandemic is ongoing. Uh, you also ran into injuries. And, and, you know, we beat Pitt, and it's a great win. It's the first ever win uh, in program history. Uh, but then a whole lot of challenges, COVID challenges. But the injuries were really significant. You uh, noted in the preseason earlier that you only had one night in which you could use the lineup you wanted to use. Yeah, it was uh, it was a very unique year. And obviously, at, at the beginning of the year, you set out and you want to minimize distractions. And those distractions come in a variety of ways. Some of them are controllable and some of them aren't. Injury is a part of the game. And, you know, the... The, the, the luck of the injury or the unluck of the injury, if you will, really hit us at a time where we had enough challenges with the pandemic, you know, on and off the court. And then on top of that, trying to bring a, a blend a group of kids together, whether they're old or young, but that chemistry and camaraderie, it, it, you know, a lot of it, that playing part happens in games and in practice. And so it was a challenge, uh, but I give our guys a ton of credit. We came out, we continued to battle. We were in a lot of close games. They never gave up all the way down to the wire where we took Wagner, you know, to the, to the very last possession. And then we had, you know, Mount St. Mary's on the ropes and, you know, really let that one slip away at the end. But those experiences that we gained last year, um, you know, as we look at what's, what's ahead of us, the hope is that we use those experiences and grow from them. But, you know, it's it's certainly, uh, you know, something that you know, we want to forget, but we have to remember those moments so that we can be better for them. And really, you talk about getting the experience. You had some guys last year. You had guys with experience last year. Of course, Miles has played a long time. Ramirez has played. But Ronell Giles, Zari Harrison, Luke Ruggery got some valuable minutes. Uh, they're going to be that much better for it. And if you could just comment on – the chemistry, do you see it coming along at the rate in which you would like to see it come along? We're a lot further along now than we were last year, and that's progress. And that's what we expect from our guys, and I'm very pleased with where we are, but know that we've got some room that we really need to grow in those areas. We have our starting five, if you will, right? And now it's working into those roles, not just you know with the starting five, but then those guys coming off the bench, and you know, and, and that chemistry that, that is built isn't doesn't happen day one, right? Doesn't happen game one. But we got to make sure that we continue to work on that every opportunity we have to come out and compete here at DeGaulle Arena or, you know, in, in Washington, D.C., as we will on uh, on Tuesday. But, you know, our goal is to be hitting our stride in, in January, February, and March as we get ready for conference play. And a big part of that will fall here in the next couple of weeks as we prepare for a very competitive non-conference schedule. To say the least, eight of the first 10 games on the road. I mentioned fans at George Washington on November 9th, Virginia Tech on November 18th, and then Illinois a month later. That's like a heck of a long stretch to be only home for two. We host Franciscan, by the way, fans. That's the home opener on November 15th. That's a canned food drive, so you bring a canned food item to the arena, uh, you will get free admission. Uh, are you looking forward to that non-conference schedule? Is it uh, maybe – is it overly aggressive? 
we always like to play in the friendly confines of the Gall Arena. You know, that, that's, that's good. We have to learn to win on the road, though. You know, for us to be a good basketball team, you have to learn to win on the road. And as you schedule games, the, you know, the, the things that we have in front of us in terms of playing those guarantee games that you mentioned, that's a part of our schedule. And then trying to fit dates um, with common opponents, travel, you know, making sure that we don't get too, too far. I mean, th those are all things that you have to take into account. So when you look at our schedule, on a normal year, we'd probably have four home games in the non-conference slate. So we're down one. You know, and as we build this thing for the next couple of years, we put ourselves in a position to, you know, to play a few more home games. But we've got to challenge our guys. We've got to find out where we are, again, so that we prepare ourselves for January, February, and March. Now, trust me, when we tip that thing up on Tuesday and then each day after that, we're preparing to win. At the same time, we need to you know, kind of balance that, you know, that, that win and, and, and focusing more on the result. We've got to make sure that our performance is where it needs to be. And that's what we're going to really focus on here the first couple of games is we have to play hard and more together than our opponent. If we do those things over the course of 29 games, we'll be pleased with our results. That other non-conference game fans, uh, I mentioned eight of the ten on the road in non-conference play. The other home non-conference game is a Western Pennsylvania rivalry. Robert Morris will visit in December, so a chance uh, to take on uh, the Colonials, uh, the former member of the NEC. All right, this is your 25th year here at St. Francis. You have your bachelor's degree from St. Francis. You have your master's degree uh, from here at SFU. You got here in 1996. You're on the cusp of uh, another season. Uh, does any of that excitement wear off over the years? Or are you just as excited as when you came out of State College High School and you were a freshman player uh, in, in the fall of 1996? It's still there, Pat. You know, that, 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 that passion and that energy for St. Francis, I tell recruits all the time that, listen, I don't expect you to be as passionate and as, you know, as energetic as I am. I have 25 years on you, but I want you to be two feet in. You know, and being two feet in Loretto, Pennsylvania, fortunately for me, we, we have a great staff, you know, and, and, the, and the players that make up our program. That excitement is only, you know, that, that level is only raised by the people that I get to come to work with every day and the people that I, that I get to compete with every day. And, and it's not just confined here to DeGaul Arena and the athletic department. You know, it's people like you, Pat, and professors and people that have been here since I was a student. And, and, and you know, to be able to see those people, you know, every couple of days or um, in, in, in the dining hall or here in the gym at a, at a game, that's what makes this place special. And that's what keeps my energy going is, yeah, it's a basketball thing, but that family atmosphere, that you know, that feeling that you that, that when you get on campus, you you, you, you want to be a part of something special and um, so it's, it's still there you know it's it's a little different excitement you know I mean back in 96 I was worrying about you know making a shot now it's you know trying to find a way to get your players to make shots but that excitement hasn't changed I knew the answer to that question by the way that was the question now more for the fans than that I needed an answer to you mentioned family and uh, it's been a family on your coaching staff Luke McConnell uh, football player here uh, and you played for his dad you talk about the connections they're everywhere and really basketball royalty in terms of Western Pennsylvania he moves up from director of ops to an assistant coaches role two of your grad assistants Ronnie Drennan Jamal King both played for you Eric Tom or uh, ET uh, is uh, on the staff Andy Helton who's essentially an alum uh, Eric Taylor uh, it really is a family atmosphere uh, and has been for a long time it was a big part of you know when when I was afforded the opportunity to be the head coach I wanted to create that that was the first thing that you know came to my mind and it's one of the things that brought me here to, to St. Francis was that feeling of family you know coach McConnell you know and and you know him believing in a goofy kid from State College and getting me here and making me feel a part of his family you know, to the point where, you know, I have to be careful who's watching this because, you know, Tom Fox is out there. But, you know, the Tom Fox and Tom McConnell, my youngest son, is named after those two. You know, so when you talk about the, the people that you know, had an impact on my life in getting to St. Francis, I thought that, that we could create the same thing for our current student athletes. And who better to demonstrate that than people that walk the halls here, whether they're football players or basketball players or whether they were former assistant coaches or, you know, GAs and, and Ronnie Drennan and Jamal King who just got done playing. We wanted to create that because, you know, as you talk about developing not just young basketball players, but young men, we wanted to have them to be able to look at, at coaches and people that they're around on a regular basis to, you know, kind of model their their life after. Examples, living examples, people that were in front of them on a daily basis. And, uh, you know, again, I'm very fortunate to have those people in my corner and work with on a, on a daily basis and, you know, not only just call colleagues, but friends. You know, I, I joke, you know, Eric's my brother, you know, but, you know, it's it, those are those relationships go back. 25 years and I want our guys to have those experiences we're talking
talking about, you know, 175 years of St. Francis, and we have the class of 72, right? It's their 50th year. You're talking about Art Hunter and, you know, a guy whose jersey's up there, uh, Kevin Porter. You know, you guys have played here and the passion that they have for St. Francis and you know, the connection to the class of 72 is, you know, and, and, and people, you go back to 82 and, you know, the, the, the 91 team and all of those stories and those passions and that, that memories, that's what I want our guys to have. And it comes down to those relationships and family is the best way to kind of demonstrate that to our guys and who knows how successful we'll be we'll find out 25 years from now but uh you know it's it, it's a, it's a great place and I'm excited to see what this family can do this year in a pickup game with Eric Taylor and Ronnie Drennan in the post Kermel the shooting guard King running the show and, and uh, give me a fifth guy I'd like your chances against just about any uh any group you can assemble it's you know I don't know I mean it, Ronnie and Jamal still have a few miles on their legs ET and I are starting to get up there in age but I don't, I don't know that we know how to turn off the competitive juices though it's one of those things you get on the court 94 by 50 and you lace them up it's it's kind of hard to turn those juices off but uh you know th those all the guys you mentioned were all conference players, except for myself, but Eric and, and, and Jamal. You were an academic All-American. Uh, well, okay, that's but but if you talk about the performance on the court. Those guys were first-team All-Conference guys, and you know what they did. They all came from different walks of life, different parts of the country, and for them to demonstrate what they what, what success meant to them, not just on the court but off the court, you know, is is again something we can point to for our current guys on you know how they can get to where they want to go, you know, on the court, in the classroom, and in life. The passion you bring to it that points them in the right direction. Safe travels to D.C. Good luck on Tuesday night, Rob. Thanks, Pat. Oh, listen, it's great to be talking basketball and do it as we prepare for a, a basketball season where we're going to play in front of fans, alumni, family, and uh, looking forward to talking again. Pat Farba with St. Francis, red shirt senior Mark Flag, Mark and his teammates, fans, open the season in just a few days on November 9th against George Washington University down in Washington, D.C. Mark, thanks for taking some time to talk to me. Yeah, no problem. Love uh, meeting out with you, and I'm excited for the season to get started. Yeah, we're all excited, and the season hopefully where we have fans in the seats and we have more normalcy uh, than we had last year. Mark started 20 games in the 2021 season, eight points per game and a team high 6.1 rebounds per game last year. Has always shot a high percentage from the field fans. Last year was no exception, 54% from the floor. You're one of six seniors or redshirt seniors on this team. This is a veteran group. It's you. Ramir, Miles, Marlon, Ty, AJ, all either a fourth year or a fifth year senior. That's a lot of experience. Is one of the veterans on this squad. Uh, do you think that that experience has paid off uh, as we're on the cusp of the new season and through the preseason? Uh, absolutely. You know, um, especially with our main guys like Miles Thompson and, and Ramir Dixon Conover, we've been a part of a lot of big runs and. We've been a part of some championships here uh, at St. Francis, and it's just being able to bring those guys back. We know how to win games, and um, especially with the younger group we have, I think it blends really well with this team. I'm going to put you on the spot here. You're a fifth-year senior. Fifth -year senior yep. What uh, is the most valuable lesson you've learned in your basketball experience from the day you came from Fairless Hills, PA, and they dropped you off? Uh, to this moment as we're sitting here on November 5th getting ready for your opener uh, against George Washington? Uh, I mean, the most valuable thing I learned from my time here is just being able to play the game with, with, uh, with some knowledge, you know, and some basketball IQ. You know, back in, in high school when I was at Fairless Hills at Pensbury, um, you know, I could just play off my pure uh, talent, athleticism, and size. But as soon as you come here, you, you can't really do it. You have guys just as, uh, as big as you, just as strong as you, just as athletic. So you really have to work on your knowledge of the game. And that's something that the coach has really taught me about. And I think that's something that I got better with every single year I've been here. Played for head coach Bill Coleman for the Pensbury Falcons. It's a quad A school, a lot of success during Mark's high school career. They went 66 and 19 during that period. He also played his AAU ball for the Jersey Shore Warriors. When you got to 
Pensbury, you were about six. You had a big growth spurt. You were like six three as a freshman around there, and and you ended up leaving right around six nine. Can you talk about how your role changed as your body changed over the four years at Pensbury? Absolutely. Um, I th- would I grow seven inches my summer from my se- from my freshman to my sophomore year, just that summer seven inches. You know it was. Big growth spray for me. And and a lot of times when a guy has that, so you have to be more of a ball handler when you're a smaller player, you develop those ball handling skills, and those can really serve you well. And we've seen that in your game, you have that polish in the post, and that could be a tribute to have to handle the ball when you were younger. Absolutely. When I grew up, you know, I always had the ball in my hands. Um, and then when I hit that growth spurt, I would, a lot of dudes that would, um, that would grow that size would be a little uncoordinated, but... Uh, when I had my growth spur, I was still able to keep my handle and um, just being able to use my footwork like I would when I was about 6'2". Mark got off to a great start last year, fans. He was the NEC Player of the Week for the first week of the 2021 season. He had 11 points, 6 rebounds, and 2 blocks in that season-opening win at Pitt last year. We opened the season later than we do this year. That was uh, right around Thanksgiving. Uh the team last year, and I talked to Rob about this, in addition to all the COVID challenges, we just couldn't stay healthy last year. And I thought that uh, contributed to, uh, uh, at times, the chemistry not being uh, really given an environment to develop. Could you touch on that? Yeah, you know, just being unhealthy and, and guys getting sick was probably the most frustrating thing that we had to go through last year. Um, of course, like we started off with a huge win at Pitt. Um, very convincing win too. It was huge for the program. But then next game, uh, one of our best point guards goes down. Our best point guard, Ramirez, goes down. Um, we just could never get into a flow, especially with a year like COVID too. Um, just, just not being able to practice with the same guys every single day hurt a young team like us last year. All right, the two tough questions to close. You're from Eastern Pennsylvania. Yeah. You're now in Western Pennsylvania. Please tell me that you've become a Steelers fan and you've embraced the the top team in the state and, and given up on the on the Eagles. Absolutely not. Eagles all the way. Go Birds. Last question. Sheets or Wawa? Wawa. Not even close. Not even close. Right, right, Miles. Miles over there. Right, Miles. Wawa by a thousand. Hey, Mark, it's been fun watching you play over uh, the last four years. We're really looking forward to uh, the last year in a red flash uniform. Uh, you bring that energy to the court. I talked to Jada DePaul. She brings it to the women's program in the post. You bring it to the men's program in the post. Good luck down in D.C. on Tuesday night, and have a, have a really good senior year. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dr. F. Appreciate it. I'm excited to get this season going, and uh, I think it's going to be a really good one. <laughs>